Ellen, how bad did you want that fall at the end of the second match? I really, I really wanted that. I just think it's good to practice being able to solidify it. You know, obviously, if you're up 10-0, it's not a big deal. But let's say the score was something different. I need that fall to win. I just want to make sure that I can secure that. And uh, yeah, I just wasn't able to do that. So I'm going to keep working on it. Compare your experience at Sunkiss with your other training environments you've had in your career. Um, I've honestly loved every training environment that I've been at. It's funny, someone was, I guess a bunch of people were like, oh, you bounce around everywhere. But in my opinion, I can almost always give you the exact reason why I went to a certain place. And then basically when it's time for me to leave, I have very clear confirmation of that and uh, of just something else that I need or, or something, you know, um, it's not just like, oh, I don't like it here and I bounce around. It's more like, uh, I don't know, I could go through the list of all of them, but you know, sometimes I'm in some place where maybe it doesn't has all the great wrestling, but it doesn't have the amount of recovery things that I need to make sure that I'm healthy, especially after all the concussions. So when I moved to Arizona, I just kind of had everything that I needed. So I'm there now and I love it. We have a great group, a bunch of women, great coaches and great weather. Your longevity is unbelievable. It seems like you're getting better. You know, you had the, the head injuries and the trauma and that's that usually ends a lot of people's career. You're getting better, right? You're placed in the, you know, you're a bronze medalist, right? I mean, to get better as you get older, how hard is that? You know, Kyle Dakes here, he's one of the older guys now yeah. at Spartan. How do you get better as you get older? Um, honestly, I just try to pursue excellence in everything I do. And um, I just don't, I don't settle for anything. So as long as I'm in this sport, uh, I believe that the best is yet to come and I'm not at my peak and the best years aren't behind me. And so I will always continue to evolve and uh, find that, that one thing or that one percent where I can get better and just keep improving on it. Helen, when we talked yesterday, you said that you just wanted to see good wrestling from yourself. How do you feel about your performance today? Um, you know, I feel great about my shape, my condition. I had a great lifting program um, from NeuroForce One, and then I have Coach Cal at the training lab who does, I think, the best weight cutting, like you know, prep that there is, and uh, and, and injury recovery, and like all these other things. So. Um, honestly, he helped me to get this this cut and to come in beautifully and super grateful for that. So I felt great. I felt sharp. Um, you know, the last time I competed was February and January, and I'm, I'm definitely a lot better than then. There's some more things I thought I was going to hit or be able to execute that I didn't, so I just need to keep working at it. Um, Helen, several states uh, have implemented <laughs> sanctioned girls wrestling. Um, where do you feel like uh, you, you know you played a part in that, and where do you feel how high do you think women's wrestling can go now? Yeah, you know I really think any woman that is stepping on the mat, uh, senior level athlete, cadet, junior, just a young girl, you are part of growing women's wrestling, and you are part of this sport becoming what it is. And for more state sanctions, right? So a state's going to add wrestling when there's girls in that state that are wrestling. So um, you know I know Sally Roberts and Kira Berry and wrestle like a girl, and um, they had the whole coalition together that was working to uh, add women's wrestling and they've done a lot a lot of work behind the scenes and at the forefront and then you know I just think all of us girls and women just showing up and stepping on the mat it uh, you know sends a message that we want to be here and we want this opportunity and, and we're growing so I think that helps as well. How long can we be doing better to grow women's wrestling? Um, you know I, I think we, we definitely need to add uh, all 50 states with state sanctioned wrestling. I think that adding women's wrestling to the, the division one program um, across all states is gonna be huge. I mean, there's girls right now that maybe they fall in love with wrestling, but they know that they wanna get a scholarship to college and right now they don't have, they might not have that option at a D1 school. Maybe some people wanna go to the schools that their parents went to or they wanna stay in the state. And if girls wrestling is not at that division one school or that school that they wanna to go to, then they're having to choose between sport and their education. Whereas the men don't have to choose between sport and their education right now. They're getting to choose both. So I think that's one way that it would help a lot. How will wrestling build female leaders? Oh, future? I mean, wrestling builds leaders period. I think this sport it just fortifies your character and your attitude and builds resilience and even camaraderie and just it's going to teach you so much about yourself and why would you not want that for you know the future generation of females and coming up in the sport especially in a, in a sport with weight cutting and and getting stronger like you're going to have to learn a lot about your body you're going to have to learn about nutrition you have to learn about you know sleeping and, and eating right and I think that will also maybe take care of um you know, body issues and other things that young girls are dealing with that just shouldn't, you know, shouldn't be such a stressor. And, and I think, yeah, 
I think we have all the women that have come before me, I think are incredible leaders. So it's already been shown that it can do that. Talking about being a leader, you've been the young kid on the national team. Now you're kind of the veteran, right? How's that? Yeah. Is, what's it like to be the leader of this uh, group going? Yeah, I turned 17 the day before I competed in my first world championships in 2008. Um, and, you know, I'm 30, going on 31 this year. So uh, I've definitely, you know, had a lot of experiences and I, I think it's really cool that we have, you know, a meet and young girls on the team and Kennedy Blades and Kylie Welker, these uh, amazing, amazing, awesome young females that are coming up and, uh, and they're going to experience that. And so it's nice that um, if I can impart any wisdom or experience then, to them, then I would gladly do that. But I mean, I think they're just kind of killing it as is, so <laughs> they're doing good. It was about 10 years ago when you were here for Beat the Streets, outdoors, uh, Madison, uh, Central Park with the big uh, Times Square. I get it. I, I haven't had a concussion lately, but uh, that was an exhibition. This was uh, best two out of three for a spot on the world team. Quite a different uh, wrestling event, but uh, how do you feel about it personally, emotionally? You know, the, the memory of it. What's that going to be? I mean, you know, this might fall under one of my favorite final X's just because it is attached with the Beat the Street event. That is a fundraiser. There's a gala after. Um, it's showcased in New York City, and then you have all the young kids here that are able to watch that, that benefit from the Beat the Streets program and what they offer. So, and then you're you're setting world team, right? You're you're setting all the members on the world team. So, I mean. I don't, can't think of an event that can pack much more in than that. That's, that's a lot as is. So I'm super grateful for everyone that put together this event and uh, beat the streets and, uh, you know, just final lives in USA Wrestling for putting this together. Helen, a huge accomplishment tonight. But what are you looking forward to most about the World Championships? Um, I was going to say winning, but I feel like that's very outcome oriented. So uh, I'm just, I, I think I'm just super excited to get after it. I, I'm healthy. I uh, have a full year really under my belt of being totally healthy and just getting to focus on wrestling and I have so many things that I'm adding and I just have the time now and the resources and the coaching and the teammates and everyone to help me push me and we're all pushing each other so I think I'm excited for that journey. Tell us about your work with Chris Pratt. Uh, yeah so a couple of years ago um, uh, Dylan the director came to me and um, you know reached out about shooting a documentary about the lead up to Tokyo and I don't think they knew all the ins and outs of what would happen and the, the depth of the injury and the recovery, but it was a really amazing um, project and Chris Pratt and his team and uh, Religion of Sports and Indivisible, uh, they all were a part of it and Reserve Entertainment, so it was just, it was crazy. I didn't know it was that big of a project till after the Olympics and I'm really glad I didn't know, <laughs> otherwise I think I would have been more nervous, but uh, it, it came together beautifully, I'm excited. Kyle Dake says, less Dake bombs because the refs blow it dead, but he wrestles different now because he's older. He said that. I see a little less inside trips out of you. Are you changing how you wrestle as you get older to conserve your body? Are you changing your style at all? Has anything really changed? Um, honestly, I, uh, I tore my MCL last March, so I think that just probably – I don't, I barely ever drill the inside trip. I don't really go for it because it is, uh, could be, a, that is kind of really going to be on the MCL if you, if you don't do it right. And then uh, also, I mean, in the warm ups, I saw Alex dislocate her shoulder. So uh, before the second match, and um, it looked like, you know, she's fine and the doctors came and everything was fine. I think it's something that's been happening, but it was just a reminder for me. Like, I think at this age, it's like I can maybe leave out a move or two and I think still get the job done, but if I, get greedy and do something hurt myself then you don't even get to go do the job so uh, I think as you get older you just get maybe a little wiser and smarter with that and I think Kyle showed that in that he always knows how to win he always knows how to figure it out and he's just going to be smart about it so you know it's like at the end of the day we, we do want the, the gold medals and you got to be smart about the way you go about that too. The 2014 event he mentioned you had some sick inside trips in Times Square. Oh, yeah. Did you remember? I mean, yeah. they were amazing, yeah. right? They were yeah. perfect. The person's head was bouncing yeah. off the mat. So it's just with age, right? No, because if you look at that girl's stance and this girl's stance, uh, Alex kind of copies that, like, Jakara stance that they're doing at the training center where everything is, like, wide legs, low, touch the ground, but really far back. So to inside trip, really, you have to really pull the person that back leg like, to you and either get them to step or you have to kind of stand them up or you have to get way low under it and the lower that you're bending your knees it's just a matter of if that's the way that you hit it or not so the move's just not not there and, and when this person's in a three-point bearing their hand on the mat you're not going to inside trip them 
Uh, I wouldn't. I, would, I mean, I wouldn't say never, but I, I just what I felt intuitively was like she knows that's coming. She's expecting that. I've hit on it, her before, and, um, and so it's just like why, why go? That's just that's not a move that you get out of so easily. It's just not worth it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm like I'm just gonna put ten points on the board and smart. Yeah. So. I like it. Yeah, thanks. Congrats. Thanks. Congrats. Thank thanks, you. Hal. Thanks, guys.